Whether this is your first, your second, your third, your fourth, whether you're a staff, whether you're a player, like just take a moment to take it all in and just enjoy the journey about what happens next, yeah? <laughs> Playing 12 hours ahead uh, in New Zealand is a huge challenge for your body, um, both from a physical perspective, but also mentally as well. Your body has a natural sleep-wake pattern called your circadian rhythm, and trying to shift that across a 12-hour time difference takes some real strategic planning and takes a significant amount of time. Even before flying, we started trying to shift our natural sleep and wake pattern. All the girls in the week prior to flying we were instructed to try and stay in bed and stay up later one hour each day. Keith! She's recovering from the flight. Off feet. Off feet Keith, here she is. <laughs> in her throne. Hydrating, living her best life. First day upon landing the key aim was purely just to try and get the girls to stay awake as long as possible because we wanted them to try and sleep in for as long as possible the following morning. So. We just encourage them to get out of the hotel, go and explore, seek sunlight, go and have a coffee and just spend time with your teammates and, and go and explore Auckland essentially. Oh, that's awesome. Following day, it was just about trying to get the players moving again. One hour's worth of activity where they maybe sat on a spin bike for 15 minutes just to get their blood flowing. They did a mobility session, they also did a pool session, so it was all around just getting generally moving again. Alright, let's start with you on air. Right. Australia. Bolivia. <laughs> Colombia. Denmark. England. Finland. Germany. Hungary. Iceland. Iceland. Japan. Okay. Thinking. <laughs> Kuwait, is that country? Yeah. Pakistan. Lithuania. Um, Moldova. Norway. <laughs> You're out. The third day was about trying to get a little bit more meaningful activity in, into them. So they did a like an activation based weight session, which involved, you know, like a 20 minute circuit of some body weight exercises, a skill session that we went down to the local park and had a bit of fun, but ultimately trying to reintroduce some hand-eye coordination and decision making. Um, so there was some games going on with the rugby balls. There was a game of cricket and we all had a bit of a bit of a laugh. of the hour, talk us through it. What was the technique? Sprint as fast as you can and swing as fast as you can. What, what, what was that feeling you had when you, when you got him out? Like the best feeling in the world. Some careful management in the early few days facilitated us being able to train uh, purposefully across day five and six, which was the Thursday and Friday of our first week. The girls were able to have a, a nice weekend off, Saturday, Sunday, ready to to hit the ground running on Monday for our test week.
Yeah, so when I used to live here, um, I was actually like six hours south of here. So I've just been having to remind everyone that, um, yeah, I didn't live in Auckland, so I'm not, I'm not a massive local. But um, yeah, just kind of giving the girls some tips on, on a bit of the language, trying to get them to pronounce some words correctly. For example, we are moving to a different location on Sunday, which is Whangarei. People are getting thrown, I think, by the WH. Um, so I've just been teaching them that's an F sound. Um, so yeah, hopefully when we do interviews when we're up there, um, all the girls will be saying it correctly. So when we first landed, the weather was brilliant. It was super sunny, everyone was chuffed because loads of the girls didn't pack their coats. Um, and ever since then, it has been windy as and raining. So we're hoping that there's going to be a change in the weather. We've been promised that it will change. Um, but yeah, being a hooker, the wind has been a bit tough in training. Different balls as well. We think the balls are a bit lighter. So um, just kind of trying to adjust to this lovely wind. Obviously it's springtime, so we're kind of getting all four seasons in one day, it seems at the minute. Out. We're going to start today with everyone receiving their participation cap, their uh, coin and their poi. I wanted to take a moment to wish the Red Roses all the very best of luck for the Rugby World Cup in New Zealand. I had so much fun with you all at Twickenham earlier this year and I cannot wait to see how you get on during the tournament. Good luck for the weeks ahead. I'll be setting my alarm clock early to cheer you on all the way. Whether this is your first, your second, your third, your fourth, whether you're a staff, whether you're a player, like just take a moment to take it all in and just enjoy the journey about what happens next, yeah? Not many people get to say they've sat in a room and been part of a World Cup. And for someone in this room, it's probably even more special. I'll take you back to the, the 10th of April, about six and a half months to the, to the day. The injury and I think everyone felt for Abby, the hard work, determination, the dark places that you've been to, and you've been to alone at times when nobody's been watching for you to get back, to be sat in this room is unbelievable and hats off to you. And then Emily and the work that she's done and the effort and the time that's gone above and beyond what any physio should be. And I think every person in this room can be so grateful for everything that you put in to, to get yourself on this plane, get yourself back fit and get yourself back firing is unbelievable. And to Miz for trusting and believing in, in Abby and believing in Emily that they'd get to this point. Just go and enjoy every moment. Be you, be amazing, be Abby well. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
we haven't really got any pressure on them, right? On the on occasion we have, we've come up with something. We've got to work our way into their third, but then we can get some pressure on them, right? Really important though, when we get in there, we look after the ball. Right? Even when we get really close to the line, we've got to be clinical, all right? Even if she gets pen advantage, be really clinical. Don't think, well, we can come back for that. Think, finish the job off. Really important for us. But we've really got to up everything we do, our mental work rate, our physical work rate, and really stay in the fight. Get them in the right area of the field and look after the ball.